how to create a seed beaded cover for a button shank. I have here a button shank in 12.5 millimeters and the button shank is just a metal disc with the loop here soldered to the back and that gives you a nice surface to glue something onto or to create a cover for um, just like I've done with my seed beads here. And that way you can um, make a button out of something that is not a button. So I've got my button shank here, and then I'm also going to use two sizes of seed beads. I have my 11 O's here in turquoise lined light topaz, and then I also have my 15 O's here in a dark bronze color. So I've got my two colors and my two sizes of, of uh, seed beads here, my 11 O's and my 15's. I have my button shank, and then in addition to uh, my beads, I'm also going to be using um, some super new glue, um, which I always use just for my knots at the end of the project. I'm going to use my uh, Beetle on Wildfire. Um, I use the .006, the thinner of the two sizes that we carry, and I've got a frost color here. You're going to need roughly um, a foot and a half to two feet of thread uh, for this project. And then I've also got my, uh, my flat nose pliers nearby, as well as my slip and snips, um, or a thread burner, whichever you prefer. And then my needles here, um, I have a, a sorted uh, tulip needle set, and I've only got a couple left in here. Um, you can see you get more than two in the assorted, uh, assorted set, but I have a couple needles that are currently um, attached to unfinished projects. So um, I've only got a couple left in here to work with and I'm gonna pull out uh, my size 10 needle for this project. So I'm gonna go ahead here and get my mat set up to begin. And I'm gonna need my needle and thread as well as my two sizes of seed beads. And you wanna have your cut button, or I'm sorry, have your button shank uh, close by. I have both sizes of my seed beads here. I have my 11 O's and my 15 O's, as well as my button shank that I'm going to be covering. And I've got my sample here. Um, I have the front here and the back. And on the back here is where we're gonna start. So the first step for me is going to be picking up a series of 18 of my 11 O's. And I'm just gonna pick those up in a circle. And you can see here I've got that a circle here at the very base of my peyote stitch. So I've gone ahead and I've already picked up 18 of my 11 O's here. Um, I've got them on my thread here close to the tail end of my thread. And what I'm going to do just to make a loop out of these is take my needle and starting here um, where my tail is, I'm going to take my needle and just run back up through those beads. So I can go ahead and just run back up through all 18 of those. And I'm just going to hold my tail here and I can pull my thread all the way through those beads and pull that tight to make a circle. Now if you want to, once you've got your circle nice and tight there, you can tie a little knot that won't really get in the way of your project. And I'm just gonna tie one knot here. I don't wanna get it, um, I don't wanna get a knot that's gonna be too big there because that will, that might clog up the holes of my 11 O's. But a simple little overhand knot there will just kind of hold that in place. So now that I've got my 18 11 O's here in a circle, I'm gonna start working in my peyote stitch. And I'm gonna go through just a few of my 11 O's here just so that I'm not working right next to that knot. And then working in a peyote stitch around my circle here, I'm going to pick up two 15 O's and I'm gonna skip one bead and go through the next bead. So I skipped one 11 O and I went through the next. And I'm gonna continue working just in this simple peyote stitch around the whole base of my circle here. P 
picking up two, two 15s as I work. After uh, finishing that first layer of peyote stitch, picking up two 15s, I have my thread here coming out of the last 11-0 that I had to run through to complete that peyote stitch. And my thread here is coming out um, of that 11-0 here and next to uh, one of these sets of two 15-0s. So what I'm gonna do is take my needle and thread and run through that set of 15s and I'm working here counterclockwise and I'm going to pick up 111 and add that 111 in between each set of two 15s working um, around my peyote stitch here. Picking up 111 and running through the next set of two 15s. another 11 and through the next set of two 15s. And I'm gonna continue this pattern until I come back around to the beginning. Now, similar to the last row, I have my thread coming out of that last set of two 15s that I had to run my needle through. And I'm next to one of my 11 O's here um, on that very outside edge of my circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to run through that 11 0 And now I'm going to pick up three 15s. Three 15s. And I'm going to add these three 15s between each one of the 11s that I just added on that last um, run around my circle here. So I'm picking up three 15s and again I'm always working counterclockwise here around my circle and running through the next 11 out and just adding these three 15s here in between each one of those 11 O's and I'm going to continue this until um, I've got th that um, 15 O's, those three 15 O's um, added to the whole outside of my circle here. And it's important to keep your tail out of the way. through that last 11 0 there. Now I'm back to the beginning where I started and I can continue through the next three 15s which will be the first three 15s that I added uh, when I began adding those three 15s in between each one of my 11 0s. So now I've got my thread coming out of a set of three 15s. Now on this pass around my circle, what I'm going to do is um, a little bit different. I'm going to pick up another three 15s and I'm gonna run back through the set of three that my thread is coming out of. And I'm gonna run back through those, running through in the same direction that I've already gone through them so that the new set of three that I picked up will be sitting right next to it. And now again, working around my circle, I'm gonna pass through 
the 11 ohm and the next three 15s, staying on the outside of my circle here. And I'm gonna repeat the steps with my three 15s. So I need three new 15s. And I'm gonna take my needle and run back through the 15s that are already part of my circle here. And pull that tight. And what we'll have are these little sets of three 15s added to the outside of my circle. And they will be sitting right on top of the set of three 15s that are in that outside line or outside circle um, of my little disc that's forming here. So I'm going to continue with this and go through my next 11 my next set of three 15s, pick up another three 15s here, run my needle through this set of three 15s, it's already part of my circle, pull tight, and I've got three 15s here added on top of or to the outside of the initial set of three 15s running around my circle. And I'm going to keep doing this until um, I've added another set of three 15s to each set that's running around my circle here. You should now have something that looks like a little sun disc. I have my initial 18 here and coming off of that, like the rays, I'm going to have these nine wedges made with the 15 O's. And each one of these little wedges is going to have three rows of 15s. And I've got two here at my first or my most inside row. And then I've got two rows of three 15s. So my thread here is coming out of one of these, um, one of these little wedges here through that center row of 15s. And I'm going to move up to that very outside row of 15s. So I'm going to take my needle and thread and I'm going to just jump up to that very outside set of 15s. So that'll change the direction that my thread is going. I was working counterclockwise um, and so now I've got my thread coming out facing the bottom here so I'll be going clockwise um, and I prefer to work counterclockwise so I'm just going to go ahead and flip my project at this point. And you can see here on my sample what our two sets of three 15s are going to turn into. This is going to be the edge here where we now start turning from working on the back to now working on the front. So if you look along the edge here, our edge is these two sets of 15s. So what I'm going to do to the one I'm working on here is coming out, I flipped my project here, so now I'm working um, counterclockwise again. And what I'm going to do is just pick up one 11 o and run that one 11 o in between these sets of three 15s on the very outside edge here. And I'm just going to connect all of those with that one 11 o so I'm picking up one 11 o and then running through the next set of three 15s. And as you pull tight, you'll see that that's starting to pull itself up and that's starting to form the edge of my button cover there. Now that I finish adding all of those 11 O's in between my 15s, I'm ready to add my button shank to what is uh, this little basket here that I formed. So I'm going to take my button shank and I want to plop it in here so that I've got the loop here on the back of my button shank coming out through that hole formed by my 18 seed beads that I picked up in the beginning. So 
So I'm going to push that button shank down into that little basket that I made. And I've got my loop here coming out the back. And I've got the flat uh, top part of it facing me. So that now I'm in position here to continue with my, with my cover and make the top part of my button. So I've got my thread here coming out one of my sets of uh, 315s. I'm going to pass through the next 11 0 and I'm going to begin to work um, from the you know outside here I'm going to work towards the inside just like on the back we started in the center here and worked our way out towards the edge and with my thread here coming out one of those 11 0s I'm going to pick up two 15s and run through the next 11 0 And you can, as you work, you can press those 11 o's um, towards the center of your project here so that they're starting to cover the top of your button shank. And then pick up another two 15s here, run through the next 11 o. And I'm going to push those 15s in towards the center to cover. The top of my shank and I'm going to continue with this the whole way around what is now going to be the top of my button. I've now completed adding my two uh, 15s here, my sets of two 15s between each one of my 11 O's running around my button shank and I've pressed those in so that they are now starting to cover the top of the button shank. I have my thread here coming out of my 11 0 here, and I'm going to continue around my circle here going through uh, the next set of two 15s, that first one uh, that I added. So now I'm on the most inner circle here, working again towards the center of my button shank. And I'm going to pick up one 11 0 here and add one 11 in between each one of the sets of two 15s. Pick up one 11 and run through the next set of two 15s here. Another 11 and go through the next set of two 15s. And I'm pressing those in there so that my 11 O's that I'm adding are now starting to cover the rest of my button shank. And I'm going to continue that um, until I've added all of those 11 O's and I'm back to the beginning here. I've now finished adding all of my 11 O's and I am back to the start here where I began adding those 11 O's. I have my thread coming out of two 15's. And I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to move in towards the center of my button shank and run up through the first 11 0 that I added there on my last on my last step. So now I've got my thread coming out the top of one of my 11 0s um, forming that very inside circle now. And for my next step here, I'm actually going to do um, two steps, two steps in one. First part here is going to be to pick up 115 and to add 115 between all of my 15s or all of my 11s. So I'm adding 115 here between all of my 11s, very similar to what I've been doing. So I've got 115 on my thread and I'm just going to travel counterclockwise around my circle here. Um, and go through the next 11 now. And now before I move on and pick up another 15 to uh, bring through or to um, connect to the next 11 here in my circle, I'm going to pick up a 15 completed adding my 11s around my button shank here. 
and I've pressed them towards the center there so they're starting to cover up a little bit more of the top of that shank. I have my thread coming out of 211 or 215s. My thread should be coming out of 215s here and I'm going to work towards the center of my button shank. So I'm taking my needle and running through one of my 11 O's here and that will bring me to this inside circle of 11 O's that I just added. Now the next step, I'm actually going to do two steps in one. So the first part of um, my next step here is going to be simply to pick up a 15 and run through the next 11 O, working again in counterclockwise. So very simple, just picking up a 15 and running through my next 11. And now while I'm still on this 11, I'm going to pick up another 15 and I'm going to run my thread, run my needle through that same 11 in the same direction that I've already run through it so that now I've added a 15 to the outside of the 11. And now I'm ready to pick up another 15 and continue working around my circle and go through the next 11 working counterclockwise. And now again, before I move on to my next 11, I'm gonna pick up a 15, run through that same 11 again, and adding that 15 to the, um, to the outside of that 11. And I can press these beads towards the center and you'll start to see that we are still covering the top here of our button shank. So now I'm ready to pick up another 15 and run around my circle here going through the next 11 that I come to. And I'm going to take another 15 here, run back through that same 11 O in the same direction there, adding that 15 there to the outside. And I'm going to take another 15 here and run through, working farther along in my circle here, running through the next 11. And then working on the same 11 here, I'm going to pick up my 15 and run through that 11 in the same direction to add that, to add that 15 there to the outside. And I'm going to continue to do this again until I've gone around my circle and my button shank one, one complete time. Now very, very close to finishing the cover of this button. I've completed that last step where I have added my 15 O's here between my 11's and I've also added 15's um, on top of each one of those 11's as I worked around. So what I'm going to do now is I have my thread coming out of one of those 11s and I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to run through, I'm going to make like a little U-turn here in my project and I'm going to run through one of those 15s that's sticking up here um, that's on top of the 11 O that I'm coming out of and give a nice tight pull here. And now this will change the direction uh, that I'm facing. So it was working counterclockwise. So now my thread's got me working clockwise. And what I'm going to do is pick up, as I work around here in order, I'm going to pick up all of these 15s that will be sticking up. And these are all the 15s that we added to the top of our 11 O's. And as I pick all these up with my needle and thread, I'm going to give a little pull here and make sure that I pull everything nice and tight. And 
And if I get everything nice and tight there, I'll have a nice flat surface with all of my beads here headed towards the center of my button shank. So now I've got a circle of nine fifteenos in the center here. So once you've gone around once or twice here just to kind of tighten everything up, I'm going to pick up an 11 0 here. And wherever I'm coming out of, whatever 15 I'm coming out of, I'm going to count to the fifth 11 0, or I'm sorry, I'm going to count to the fifth 15 0 from where I'm coming out. And I'm going to pass my needle through that 15 0. And pull tight and so that way I've got my 11 0 here kind of bridging um, that hole there that was in the center and I'm going to take my needle here and I'm going to run back through that 11 0 and cross through the 15 0 here on the other side, and it should be the 15 0 next to where my thread was first coming out. And I'm going to cross my needle through so that I'm crossing through that 15 0 towards the 15 0 where I had started with my thread coming out of that 15. And I'm just going to pull everything tight here. And so all I've done there um, is just added a uh, 111 0 here in the center here uh, to the center of my circle of 15s just to take up that little bit of space that was still showing there. And now my button is all done. All I'm going to do here is take my thread and I'm going to work to the back of the button and I'm just going to kind of zig my way, zigzag my way uh, back through this pattern here. And pulling tight as I go. And when I'm on the back of the button shank here, I'm going to go ahead and just tie off my thread. I'm going to tie it off and then I'm going to run it, my needle through a few beads here uh, just to hide the tail of my thread. And I'm going to cut that off. And I'm going to glue the back of the button here wherever I'm going to cut my thread. Let that dry for a minute, and then I will be ready to use my button. So there you go. There is how to cover one of these lovely button shanks and make them into your own homemade seed beaded button.